Dave here, how are you? Today on the show, oh, well, how are you? I hope you've had a good week. Everyone indoors, which means you're going to be in your shed making things. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I've taken a few weeks off and I'm going to be hanging out here and hopefully making more videos and making, catching up on the projects that I should have done ages ago. All right, today on the show, we're going to make a jointer fence for this. Now, basically, it will be a piece of timber that comes down the side, a piece of timber that is glued onto the side of it, and it will guide this jointer plane as it's going along and keep it square. We'll keep the edge square to the face of the timber I'm working on. It's very, very handy, and I can't understand why people aren't doing it with, with wooden planes. I'm guessing a lot of you will say, Dave, I've done it, I've done it. Well, great, but I haven't seen it much, so I thought I'd do it. Now, I've got a head start on things. What I've done is I've mucked around with a bit of rock maple and a little bit of very highly figured red gum. It's the same red gum that's in the uh, lever cap for my plane. Now, it's a very organic process. A lot of people will say, you need the full plan before you start. Well, I'm, I, I kind of feed off the job as I'm going along. And it, it, it speaks back to me. I know that sounds weird and a bit of a tree hugger. Well, I don't know. It just seems to work. Some projects go great. Some just turn to rubbish. All right. Now, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? Uh, the other next thing we're going to do is the stop chamfer plan. I'll be talking about this. I did a little bit of work on tidying this up and done a little bit of research on how to actually use it because this is one of my great-grandfather's tools, Arthur. Remember, I did a series on Arthur's toolbox. I'll put a link up there for you. You can watch it if you want. It's years and years old, so some of the videos, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just starting out when I did that part. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is, so I'll, I'll use that. I'll show you why it's called a stop chamfer, and it's it's fun. Uh, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the Pro Edge knife jig. I've had the Sorby Pro Edge for a while, and I love using it for chisels, especially for turning tools. It's great. Chisels, it's pretty good. Uh, it's really, really nice to get a high polish with the, the uh, 3000 grit belts from the Trizact belts on it. And I've never understood how to use the knife jig. Well, I taught myself how to do it. So I'll go through that with you as well. It's one of those things that, you know, it's black magic. Well, I've, I've cured it. Uh, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Oh, one of the, the winner from last week. Or oh, there's Derek with his push block, the micro jig ripper push block. And uh, Derek sent that photo in for me. Notice the transitions are a little bit quicker. Uh, it's, a, it's a single step now instead of a double step. I've worked out another way of doing it. All right. So the first thing, as I said, the joint offense. Now, I'll run you through a little bit of what I've done. I've got some video here. I'll put the specs on to see the screen a little bit easier. Now, this is, there's no sound in this. This is when I was ripping this rock maple on the bandsaw. And that's just a little 3 8 blade in there. I might get a, uh, a better blade for that bandsaw. This is the one that just came stock on the machine. And whilst it's doing an okay job, it's, uh, it's making the machine work a little harder than it really needed to. Then I was running at the rock maple that I'd cut through the uh, drum sander. And isn't that machine fantastic? It does a great job. Back to me. All right, so that, that's the lead up to it. And then I did the glue up and you saw the picture of the glue up when I, um, on Instagram and also on uh, Facebook, things like that. And here it is here. This is, I'll take this out of here. That's after I've glued the piece of figured red gum. How nice is that? It's going to pop. When I put the finish on it, it's going to be real. And I'm going to try a different type of finish. I'm going to muck around with something called Whittle Wax. So I haven't used any of it yet, but I'm just going to go down that path. I was looking at Osmo and, you know, the, I use the U Buttes and I, the Whittles came along and I thought, you know, I'll give that a shot. It was easy for me to get. All right, so this is Rock Maple. Now you'll see there's a really nice area here. And I thought that that could flow 
in the area where I'm going to mount this onto the plane. So on the side here, I've got a chamfer. And this is why I was talking about the stop chamfer. You can see the chamfer there. And then the flat section here. So this is going to go onto the side of the plane like that. And then, whoop. And you can see that's the, uh, that's how it's going to look underneath. It's going to be nice. So the first thing I need to do is I've taken all of the blue tape off and I'm going to clean off the rest of it. Now, some people would say, Dave, you need to use a drinking straw. A, I was going to say a wooden drinking straw, but obviously it's not. It would have been a paper drinking straw of some sort to push along to lift all that glue off. Now, that's great for using PVA glues where they'll flow easy, but this is a... Um, is a two-part mix glue and I didn't re Techno glue is what it is. It's an epoxy and it's very thick viscosity. So running a, a uh, something along there isn't going to work very well for me. I'm going to bring this camera around the front and I'll show you how leaving a bit of glue on can actually be handy for you. So there's the transition and here we are. There's the, the glue there. Lift this up ever so slightly and come in even closer. How's that? Oh, there. Yeah, about there. I'm hoping that I'll move that out of the way and then it may not have so much contrast happening there. That's better. And back just a touch. All right, so I've torn off all of the glue, uh, sorry, the, the blue tape, and you can see I've already started working on this part here. It's just a matter, don't try and run the chisel this way, because that's the obvious first thing that you, you think, oh yeah, that's the way to do it. Just come straight in from the side and lift it. It's only going to be little bits holding on. And this is where the rigidity of the glue is helping me. Because the blue tape has done everything for me. I'm going to have to get in front of the camera here. Come around the corner a little bit. Done. See that? Just came off in one piece. Now if I'd taken all of that off, it may have been an issue for me. All right. Just get rid of that last bit of tape. Got to be careful here that we don't dig in like I just did then. Now a bit of glue has leaked around the back and that's all right because we've got another little fellow here that's going to help me out in a second. But just get rid of the, it's, it's a patience thing. It really is. There we go. Drag that back there a little. All right, now you saw me starting to do a bit of scraping there. Now I'm going to use my card scraper and I'm going to pull it backwards. right the way along. See, how good is that? Just a little spot there. Gone. And another straight cut. Beautiful. And I'm going to do another one this way. Lovely. And one more of this. 
I think that's beautiful. All right, I've got that and I could also quickly give it a scrape there. But the next thing I'm gonna do is run it through the bandsaw. So on the back here, I'm gonna cut that off. Whoop, bring it back here so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna cut that off there. I'm not gonna use the table saw because this is not, the edge of that's not parallel to that. I'll switch the cameras so you can see what's happening over the back here. And I didn't put this on my hip. It is now. Turn that on. How are we going for time? 11 minutes. Beautiful. These guys. This is going to be freehand. Like so, turn that off. <laughs> All right, so you can see that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dock the ends off on the capex, put these back on. This is only going to take a second. Actually, I won't dock them off yet because I want to, I want to plane these first. So. this through. If you're watching on the Premiere, pop some comments over here and you know that you can look at all those comments further down the track if you're watching the recording. I think if you're watching on a computer, uh, chat or comment, something like view and it, it'll pop them up again and you can see it as live or uh, just which ones it thinks you want to see. I don't know how they work that but it's you know, interesting. That one there, go back to the other camera. Like so. Let's see what I'm up to. Okay, so here, if I can get up to about there. I'm gonna clean that off. Yeah, come back to about there might be good. And up. Yeah, about there. All right, I'm gonna clean this off with a plane and. I'll probably use this guy, the, the jointer. Let's see how we go. It is taking stuff out. It's just going very slowly because I don't want to rush it. This is the most beautiful plane I've ever used. Starting to go there, I need to take a bit more off there. Now what I'm doing is I'm doing, favoring this end as I'm planing, and then I'm coming back ever so slightly for my start, for the approach cut. Getting there. Very, very close. We're good here and there. All right. Now I'm going to start cutting into the a little bit more there. Here we go. See the shavings coming out? Both types. 
And I think I better go from the other side. This is highly figured. We'll see how we go. That's looking a bit better. Rather than working khaki handed, I'll rotate it. I love this bench. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I love it. All right. Look at that. And look at that. That's exquisite. All right. What I'm gonna do now is switch the cameras back to there. And I'm going to put a chamfer here. Now I'm not gonna use the big fellow. I'm gonna use this guy. You remember this fellow? Hasn't it come up beautifully? I love this little plane. I'm gonna put a 45 degree on it. Now I'm not gonna use the stop chamfer plane because it's not, the blade's a little bit high for this extremely, <laughs> this is such, so much figure. The little guy here, does a great job. I'm going to do the same on the other side on the rock maple. <laughs> See those? This would have ended up in a garbage bin somewhere or as landfill. <laughs> oh, I'm a tragic. Look at these things. All right, now I'm going to dock it off on the capex. So you can see I have the bottom all finished. That's just, that's all done, except for a little bit of sanding. That's all done. I'm going to, going to knock this off here and take it off here. And then we'll have, I'll show you a little bit more of the reasoning behind why I've done a few things here. To the capex, give me a sec. Yes, one more cut. There we are. Back again. There we go. This now doesn't look too bad. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't ripped this side parallel to this because we don't need to. Remember I, I said we're gonna do things organically. Well, there we go. This now, it's making a little bit more sense, isn't it? The reason we've got this step to bring it in is so that we can get coverage over the plain blade. So we've got the edge here, which is Paduk. And if I was to put something like that, well, you can see the blade isn't going to make it all the way to the edge of the piece of timber that I'm planing. So this red gum section here is a step. So it keeps the mosquito hanging around. Uh, it keeps the plane actually working on the piece of timber. The 45 degree that I've got here 
is to stop that edge actually contacting the, the bottom of the blade. See, the blade protrudes from the sole of the plane, so I don't want it touching the, uh, the reference fence. So hence that 45 degree chamfer. And a little lip there for it to have reference against also against the bottom of the plane, the sole of the plane. Now you'll notice here, this is all on purpose. This is by no mistake. See the grain I have here? See how it's like that? It's going to follow this. It's going to look really nice. Now, when I was gluing this up and, and setting it all up ready, I had the plane like this. I thought, um, yeah, like, like that. This is the side I wanted to put it on and I was putting pieces of wood on top and then I was thinking right now I need to, you can see I've actually drawn a line, I made a mistake. It's, it's one of those things when, you, when you're making something, it's always a good idea to have some kind of a reference as to where things are. So what I should have done was I'll get another piece of wood and I'll show you. And this is another bit of that rock maple that I cut off. Isn't rock maple a lovely wood? Okay, so having it there like that, I should have put it like that and then put the plane on it as to where it was going to be. That's, that's how it was going to be. And then, you know, people are going to be saying, of course, David, of course. And then draw a line down it, right? And then write glue there. It's easy. It really is easy. See, you can see where I've written glue. It's upside down, but don't worry. You'll know what I'm talking about. So the plane sitting here, glue down there, which means I put my blue tape on the non-glue side. So I put the tape above the line or right on it. And then glue it together. Well, you know, yeah, we all know that. <laughs> but just a little tip. Don't try and look at the piece of timber and put it on top. Yeah, that's, that's the way the plane's going to be. Put on top, um, where am I? You know, it's not going to work for you. All right, so now we have this, and then I have this here, and I'm looking at it, and one of the things I want to do is I want to have the rock maple, which is in the top of the, it's the insert, the, the body of the plane. Then we'll go to Paduke, and then we'll go to Rock Maple down the side, red gum underneath against the sole, which is Jarrah. Now I need to anchor this onto there and have it removable. So my plan is to have a couple of really nice brass insert nuts that I'll put into the body here. And they'll be fine, because it's just another little brass feature that'll be on the side of the plane. And a couple of, I've got to find some um, 5 16 maybe 8 millimeter bolts. I'll work out what I'm going to use. I don't want to rush this at all. Uh, so that's, that's where I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to use my French curves. I'll follow where, uh, turn around this way. You can see where it's coming up above. I want, it to, I want the back to be in line with the other piece of rock maple. See, see right here? Here's my nose. <laughs> I want that to be in line there. So things really look nice. And then I have to work out the distance down. And then I'll put, then I'll put the French curve on it and, and away we go. So that's, that's enough of that one for the moment. But I like it. What do you think? This, it's, it's a simple thing to do. It's just stick a piece of wood on another one, put a chamfer on it, Tied it up so it's not going to hurt your hands when you touch it. That's the big thing for me. I like things to be people friendly, hand friendly. When you touch something, it's inviting. It's not, ooh, ow. And uh, it's got to be straight. And the side of your plane has to be 90 degrees to the sole of your plane. If it's not, well, you're going to get rubbish results unless you create some kind of a, an angle on this top section from here back to there to adjust it. There are adjustable joint offences that you can buy, but I think I'll give this a sand and a bit of a shape up, but that'll be on another day. So I'm moving this out of the way 
And the next thing we were going to look at is the stop chamfer plane. Now, this thing uh, is a unique kind of an animal. It has, the sole is actually kind of a 90 degree area there. See, so it's a piece of wood, sits in there lovely. The depth that the blade is pushed down inside the throat represents, you can see across the end there where the blade is, how deep the chamfer will stop at. So it's a stop in two manners. It will stop the plane chamfering when it reaches the, the piece of wood that you're cutting or chamfer planing rests totally in the bottom of this channel. And also you can set it up so that you can stop against that as well and then finish put a nice little 45 or 30 degree angle with a plane or a draw knife. We would normally use a router these days. Well, back in the day of Arthur's time, my great grandfather, they didn't have a router in their backyard. You know, routers were things that came along a lot later on. They had router planes, which used to trench out the bottom of a, a dado or clean up a, a rabbit or a rebate. Uh, now, the other thing is this thing at the front here. This is the mouth. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a mouth and also the toe of the plane, which is the front. Now, it has this brass section here that sits down. See, the blade is in behind it. And there's the mouth and, and basically the, the rest of the front of the plane, the toe. You need to have enough distance between the blade and the mouth. If I bring it up closer, you might see it for an escapement. You can see through there. You can see through to Okay, so this area here is the escapement. So this is where the shavings have to come out. If they don't come out here, this thing is going to bog up and it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be rubbish. So I've got a piece of jarra over here. This works with softwoods, it works with hardwoods. It will not work with that highly figured red gum. I had to use a low angle on that just to really slice it. All right, so I've got a big chunk of jarra here. And I will switch things around a little bit so you can see easier. How good is this? I love this bench. I keep on saying it, and it's for good reason. About there. We're going to give it a shot there, see how it goes. And I'll switch the cameras around again to there. Yeah, about there. All right. Lovely piece of West Australian Jarrah. Now, I want to run a chamfer from let's say here, to let's say here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the plane and I'm going to put it there and then I'm going to get a block. I'm going to put the plane right on the point where it's going to finish. See back here, bring this along a little bit further so you can see it better. I'm going to put the point of where the blade is, so just here, I'm going to put it on that. Or just back from it. I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to put a clamp on that. Ah. About there. Now, if I was doing this all the time, I would have measured the distance that I needed, and I think it's possibly two inches. Okay, so from there to there, is basically the distance from the front to there, front to there. And the other end, I'm going to put the blade on where I'm going to start and a block of wood. Oh, you need to see this. There you go, you can see both sides. So I'm going to put a block of, oh, keep coming back further, David. How's that? Good. Block of wood clamp first. Now the old guys wouldn't have needed to use clamps 
they would have been pretty good with it on their own. Okay. Now, I'm hoping this is all going to work. <laughs> so there's one of my marks. I'll see if I can make it a little bit easier to see, like so, and like so. I'm going to start by planing from there. See it coming out of the escapement? And we'll start again. And see it started right on it and finishing on it. See the chamfer happening there? It's stopping and stopping. I need better vision on that. I'm going to raise the camera up a little bit. Um, one more click on the tripod and we're there. Hmm. I think that's going to be slightly better. All right. You'll be able to see me working a little bit easier there. That's easier for me too. Getting there. Beautiful. What do you think of that? See that? So that's how they did it. I love it. It's a little bit rough there. Maybe I should just... That's, that's got it. Lovely. And if I wanted to tidy it up at this end, I would undo this and then start it right there and it would do a couple of passes let's do that let's do that rather than just talk about it david there all right i'm going to bring the camera in nice and close so you can see it there's the stop, there's the mark that I had, I can tidy that up a little bit. And down the other end, there's the other stop. And there's my consistent chamfer. How nice is that? I'm going to put this over to the side and go back to the other camera. Nice and quick change. Beautiful. All right, let's pull the plane apart and I'm going to show you some of the workings of it because it's fascinating. Stay there. <laughs> Move that out of the way. That one out of the way as well. And that. Wooden mallet. You could use a steel hammer if you wanted to, but I want this thing to last. Now, to open these up, some people hit that. That's the wedge. I hold on to the wedge and the blade and give it a tap. And out it comes. Now, you might be interested. The blade is an old file. I don't know if Arthur made this himself or what. There's the back of the file and they've just sharpened the end up for it to work. The wedge has a little cut out area that he's done with these carving chisels for the escapement. The, down the inside, down the throat of the plane, it's interesting. You notice on the side, there's these screws down the side here. On this side, 
I think someone, when they made this, they didn't think things through right at the beginning. You know, I said organic, you, it happens as it goes along. Well, those screws have been cut off because otherwise that wouldn't have gone down. <laughs> the screws were actually coming out into the throat area. The screws at the back here, there's three screws there, three screws here, and two screws on the front, two brass screws. They are the things that hold this brass cover over the top that retain the wedge and the blade. Now, whilst I've got it there, let's see how we're going for time. We've got plenty of time, which is great. I'm gonna have a quick chat about some, a, a sharpening tip. You may, this blade, now, I don't know how old this is. Now, I'm guessing Arthur finished work in the, in the 40s, 1940s, around there. So this is at least 80 years old. And hence this. Now, I don't think anyone used it since Arthur tools down. I'm the first person that's probably used it. I know my cousins uh, had access and my uncle had access to these things and, they, and my uncle built a boat uh, with the tools as well in, in Arthur's shed. Uh, but I don't know if he used this stop chamfer plane. I don't know. So this was sharp, sharp, sharp. All I did was give it a quick hone. I'll bring this camera around to here. And let's have a look, see if this is going to work any good. About, about there, okay, done. Now, this is my strop, two sides. One is a coarse leather side and the other is a fine leather side. I only ever really use the rouge with the coarse leather side. Uh, now, I use it on my bench because it's got the anti-slips and doesn't go wandering all over the place. You can use a router mat if you wanted to, I guess. Now, I don't use it in the middle if I can avoid it, I, because my fingers have got to get under here to hold onto the blade, and it's really not enough room. So I bring it to the edge. So my hand now, I got plenty of room under here to hold this blade and to steady it. So the thing is, a bit of the rouge or the polish. Now, as a few people make this stuff, I'm sure there's more than a few. Uh, this is from FlexCut. Uh, Sorbys make one, and also Veritas have a green polishing compound. First thing to do is to just clean the back up, make it sure it's nice and shiny right up near the end here. Now, not being a chisel, I haven't got to worry about maintaining flat all the way through here. It's really only getting it flat and polished there. Then we turn her over, and this old thing's got a massive round on it, but it seems to work. I might even just work on this with the Sorby further down the track, but next thing to do is to clean that edge up. Now, I can't do it like that because the edge isn't actually touching. So you roll it up until you see it's touching and you remember where that is and then pull it back flat. Now, draw back with your shoulders. See how I, oh, I actually my legs are doing all the work. I'm just, I'm holding every, my torso and, every, and my arms are all staying stationary. And it's just my, I'm working at the knees. Don't be tempted to do this, because see what happens? You will roll the edge off and it's never going to be sharp. We're trying to keep that, it's, a, it's an angle on purpose. It's a, a nice shallow angle, not a steep angle. So again, we just get it to where we know that it's touching and then we pull back and we, we the faster happens as you, get more confident with it. But remember, use your legs to move yourself backwards. Don't use your, don't use your uh, hands and wrists. They're just holding on for everything. There we go. Now I'm gonna just slightly pull the back up again. Now see how my fingers are hanging over the edge here. I'm not risking knocking my knuckles against the work surface. And flip her over, same thing. I really do need to clean this up. And then here, so it's touching. I'm, ching, I'm using the, the camera over there to, to look at where it is. 
So if nothing else from the show today, you've just learnt that tip on how to use your body to drag it backwards, the blade backwards, it's going to make a huge difference. Now that is sharp as a razor. Oh yeah, I can, I can feel that. There we go. Just a little bit of a, for instance, see that? <laughs> I don't know if it's a different quality of steel in these files, but they, they, these guys used to do this all the time, make their own stuff. Um, so I shall put this back in and you just set it down to the depth that you want the chamfer to be. I'll go to this camera, it might be easier. See, there's, there's the front of the mouth. This, this here is the mouth. And adjusting this mouth down opens and opens and closes the mouth relative to the blade position. See, if I had it all the way down there, this, this plane wouldn't work. Come around the corner here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay? You have to have the mouth open. <laughs> it's a lovely plane. So for all the people that ask me, Dave, I've, I've got one of those or I've seen those, you know, can you give me some photos so I know how to use them? There you go. Pop the wedge in, pull the blade back from the mouth, give it a little tap. I try and use the mallet because, you know, it's kinder, it's a lot kinder. Um, now the next thing I can, put, so I've got the mouth fairly open there and the mouth, the blade has to actually be further down this way than the mouth as well. So it's, it works, it works. I'll, I'll tap this down. That's all open and it works. If you wanted to, you're finding that things aren't working. You could reduce, you could grind a little bit off the mouth if you needed to, to let it come back a little bit further. All right, that's enough with that one. Next thing we're going to have a look at, how are we doing for time? I think we're going, going good. The Pro Edge and it's, um, oh, before I do, see this? This is baking paper. People have said to me, Dave, you need to use something to stop your clamps getting glue all over them and your bench is getting glue all over them. So I'm starting to use this. It's just baking paper from the shop. Pull some out, throw it down. It's cheap. I actually mixed the glue on baking paper folded over in half so it had a bit of thickness. Mix the glue up on that instead of grabbing a piece of melamine or, or whatever I have been doing. Another little tip. Thank you very much for that one for the people that suggested it. All right, uh, where are we? Where are we? The Pro Edge. I'll bring that over. There's a couple of things that I've done with it that you might find interesting as well. Now, I've got it unplugged at the moment, so it's nice and easy to use. The first thing I'm going to show you, you're going to look here and say, Dave, what's all this here? Where are the knobs gone? Well, mine had little nuts that screwed onto the side. You notice it just stuck there? I've got some, where is it? Where is it, where is it? Here we go. I got some of this and I know what it is now because I put a label on it the other day. I got some super glue, or your CA glue, whatever you want to call it. And I put it on the back of some rare earth magnets. I put the guard on, super glue on the back of the magnet. And whilst it, the guard was on the, um, the bolt section or the screw section, whatever you want to call it, of the retaining section here was protruding and I pushed the magnet up against it and, until the super glue went off, which was only a couple of seconds. And I did another one, another one, and did it down the bottom here as well. Now, that's how quick it comes off. And it holds quite well. No more undoing and doing up. Because that's the reason I wasn't using the guard because it was a pain in the neck. So I came up with that little idea and I love it. You might be wondering what this thing here is. This is the pigtail that holds onto the buffing mop and Derek made this for me. Again, rare earth magnets. So it all slides over 
I haven't got to do too much mucking around. Everything's safe. There you go. Now, knife jig. I'll turn it around this way so it's a little bit easier to see what's going to happen. First thing we've got to do is take the work table off. So this is the table that carries all of the jigs and it's got a captured spanner that undoes that. And we're going to keep a hold of this. We're going to put the work table to one side. Right, next thing we're going to do, release the tension on the belt. Take the guard off, which is nice and easy. Take the belt off. Now I'm working upside down at the moment as well. So if I get something wrong, don't be too hard on me. And the side here, these are 13 millimeter. So crack that one, crack that one. These are the supports that hold the wear plate in position. And the knife sharpening jig comes with its own wear plate. Now this is raised. I think they've done this so that you can get a, a, a steeper angle. And it goes straight into the same mount points. So that way around into, into there. So that, so, as I said, I'm working back to front. Couple of nips there, and the other one. Doing it yourself is going to be a whole lot quicker. There, and tighten it up. 13 mil spanner again. Done. So there's my new wear plate. Put the 600 belt back on. If the if your knife is really rubbish, well then you might want to use a 120 to start, but it's, or a 240, but they say 240 down to 600 is, is their steps. So they, they, when you get these things, it comes with a 60 and a 120 belt, I think. And if you buy their other deluxe model, it comes with, with another 120 and some other little fitments. Uh, but I've, I've also got the 600, the 1200, and the 3000 Trizact, and that's what we're going to use today. Tighten her up, and that's that. And we also need to put on the other bar. So instead of the, the work table, this guy is going to go on. Now you notice that the bottom here is kind of rounded. That sits on the motor. <laughs> it's pretty easy, isn't it? This is the bar that we're going to be resting the tool support on. And we're going to, there's a hole here that this, remember we put this to the side. This is the, the bolt that hold, that used to hold the other, oh sorry, the other table on. So we're going to put this into there. Turn it around so you can see where I'm at. So remember, this will go through there and into there. That's the plan, David. Yeah. As I say, of course I was working upside down. Right? And then you let it drop down until it rests against, against the top of the motor. Tighten her up. Release that spanner. And there's my work support. Now, uh, I should be okay up here. I'm going to put a clamp on this so it doesn't go wandering. <laughs> I love it. I ain't going anywhere. All right, put the guard back on. And then I'm going to some quick plug some power into it and I'm going to move the camera the, the other camera here around to this side and we can switch cameras in a second about there how's that looking 
not too bad. All right, now the jig itself, this is the jig. Okay, so it has a clamping situation up the top here. There's a couple of dowels through there that the knife rests against inside the clamp. These are clamp tensioners. And then this one here is, a, is another one. It works out as a fulcrum and pulley, or sorry, lever situation. So I'm going to put the knife in. In a second, like so. And that's how it's going to hold it. I'll get this. Tighten them up. This comes with the machine. Just so it's got it. And then we t tension this one. And that really gets a hold of it. Okay. Switch glasses. And then we've got this other thing here. This is a little round shaped stop that's going to slide on to the support tool support. And we're going to look at where to put this regarding the angle. Now that's looking pretty good up there. So I'm going to nip that up tight here. And it's much like a lot of the, the knife holders, this kind of style is, is, is similar across whether it's a, a slow speed water wheel or whether it's one of these things. So what the plan is, we're going to just drag the knife along and then rotate it through the end, like so. Turn that up a little bit, like so. And then you turn it over and you do the other side. It's pretty simple. And then we'd go to another kind of a, another grade belt down to the 3,000, go to the 600, then the 3,000. Um, right, let's, let's do it. Let's do it a little bit. So I'll put my eye protection on. Now, one of the things is this knife is reasonably sharp. It would cut a peanut butter sandwich, <laughs> but I sharpened one yesterday and it was a heavier knife than this. And I cut a roast beef sandwich and there was hardly any weight applied. It just went straight through it. I was, I've never had a knife that sharp. Very amazing. All right, here we go. The belt is tracking well. Rest that there. I don't know if you can see that. That's pretty, pretty good. I'm going to do the other side now. I need to put my arm around here a little bit. But, oh, I bumped it. There we go. Side again. And if you find you aren't getting it, working fast enough, just go to a go to a coarser grip. I shouldn't be working over the top. Of it. Oh, that truly is amazing. It's 
stop it there. Now I'm going to leave it in the jig. Stop the machine. Do that. Do that. You see how good that is. Take that off. Get the 1200. The six. Hold on, what's, that's the 3000. This is the 1200. I know it's 1200 because I've written it on it. <laughs> it's the only way. It is the only way. Clamp that. Put this back on. So quick. Turn it on, make sure it's tracking well. Beautiful. If it's not tracking, there's a couple of adjusters up here that you use the bars with, that and here. And that will move the belt left to right. right let's go with this. 1200 here. Just be careful you don't dawdle on these things because they will burn. These are polishing. You've got to be apply enough pressure but make sure that you don't hang around. Um, down to the next grit. Which is the 3000. You can see this is such a quick system. I would ordinarily possibly have a couple of knives on the go at once. Let's see if it's tracking. That's fine. This one's 3,000, which is going to take it down to 2 microns. Which is very fine. That's it. Now, I'm not going to put it on the buff. I'm going to put it on the over the strop instead. Pull the power out, because I can. Move it out, out of the way. Come around to the edge here. Drop this down a little. And take it out of the clamp. I only need to undo this part. Ah, oh, here's a tip. When, you, when you're using this, I'll show over here. When you're using this and you're undoing, don't have your fingers anywhere near here. This is a pinch point and it will get you. You'll feel as it, as, as it happens, but just a heads up. All right, where's my strop? Take these off. <sighs> David, well, there's that and there's the strop there. Beautiful. All right. Goodness, that's better. Okay, bit of rouge. You've been enjoying the show. It's a mix up, you know. I try, oh, now again, we've got to make sure that we're not going to roll the edge. We need to still do the same thing. We can draw it across. Hmm. Do the other side. I'm going to have to just be careful with my fingers. That's so sharp. How sharp? Let's, let's see if it will do anything to this piece of paper. All right. Where are we? Well, kind of hacked it a little bit, but... If I was to do that, that's all right. That's lovely. Now, what I used to do, go back to this one. What I used to do, as I, and I still do, I use a steel. You know, I sharpen a knife with a steel. It's what my father used to do. It's what I, how I learnt. 
Um, you see butchers in a butcher shop sharpening away on a steel. You know, they do it with their eyes shut. They've done it for so long. Now that's fine, and I found that meat would cut okay, but it, you know, to tear it a bit. And you think to yourself, well, what doesn't really matter when you eat it? You're going to chop it up anyway. It doesn't matter how pretty it looks once <laughs> once you start getting your choppers on it. But this, a sharp tool is a whole lot safer than a blunt tool. And a blunt blade is an accident waiting to happen because you're going to force it and it's going to jump out of the cut that you're wanting it to do. And if you're in the way when it does that, you're going to be in trouble. Whilst it may not be sharp enough to cut the material you're doing properly, it will cut into you or just chew into you, one or the other. Sharp tool, easy to handle and just a pleasure to use. Absolute pleasure to use. Let me have a look at my list. And I think I've just chopped my list, chopped my rum list up. Here we go. So I'm going to have a look here. Joint offense, which we did. The stop shaft for plane, pulled apart. Uh, we put the click clamps on the cypress and we pulled it apart and showed you how, the workings of it, how it all works inside. The Pro Edge knife jig, something that, you know, until a couple of days ago, it had been sitting in the cupboard. I hadn't really bothered to look at using it. And now that I have, I'm very happy that I have. This thing here, the rare earth magnets on the side works beautifully. Now they have changed their design, I've noticed recently. So instead of these being a nut, they're actually a little bolt that comes out now. So that's the nail section goes into, there's a thread into those bolts that hold the wear plate onto the body of the machine. So I might have to think of another way of doing that, but this works for me. What else have we got here? We've just gone an hour. Uh, Derek with his uh, push block. I haven't got any more competitions at the moment. Uh, the coronavirus is, you know, just sweeping through the world. Hopefully this has been a little bit of a light respite from ever, all the rubbish that's <laughs> happening at the moment. Give you a, a bit of a time out. So thank you again to all of my uh, patrons and for the people that supply things for me to show you. And, uh, and just thanks for watching. It's, it's been so good to spend an hour with you guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like the show. Subscribe to the channel down there. Use the links in the description box. It helps me keep going while this rubbish virus is happening. Okay, and I think that's it. There we go. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I shall see you next week with Chris Clark, the editor of Australian Woodsmith Magazine. Bye.